Hi everybody, it's Megan. Um, I have just finished this half of this um, Harry Potter um, diamond painting, so it's halfway finished right now. Um, I just submitted a video of me finishing um, the top part here with the nine drill tip. So go ahead and look for that soon. Um, and what I'm going to do right now, because I just noticed it, is I'm going to cover um, the sticky part at the top with some tape so that it doesn't get covered in lint and such. Because um, we know that that's not exactly the most... Um, pretty thing in the world is to have a bunch of lint stuck to your painting. So in order, this edge here, I don't use anything to make it straight. It doesn't really bother me too much. I'm just moving them so I can tape it down. Tape the uh, sticky part down a little bit. This is just regular scotch tape. Um, I'm just gonna snip it a little bit over here on the side and then just pull it down. Um, it's just regular trans, translucent um, scotch tape that I'm using. And I cut the edge off because the perforation on the end makes it, if you want it to ever take this off, it makes it really hard to take off. So I just make it a flush, smooth edge. Okay, so in this video, what I wanted to show you was how to make your paper, how to cut your paper so it's um, straight. Because the problem that I kept coming across was that I would cut the paper, but it would be like right in the middle of a line of drills. And so I would have to cut a little bit each time to so that it wouldn't, to cover that part with a drill so that it wouldn't dry out. So what I do is I use my light pad underneath my um, diamond painting so I can see through the paper. Um, if you can see a little bit better like that. And then what I do is I, I use a ruler, a mechanical pencil, and I have my scissors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find kind of like that whatever size section works for you. Um, I'm going to try to find my halfway mark in here. I think it might be here. Here. Yeah, okay, we'll just go with this. So what I do is I just line it up on that line. I make sure that it's straight all the way up. And then I go a little bit, just a, the slightest touch, a little bit more. I'm actually gonna bring you on this side. Hopefully you can see that. Well, let me just make sure you can see what I'm seeing. Okay. Okay, so I line it up on this edge between the drills that I want to stop at. And I take my mechanical pencil and I just kind of make, whoops, shoot, you don't want that to happen. You make like a line and it's not going to draw on the, on the paper, but it's going to make a line that you'll be able to see once you pull up the paper. It's gonna make like a perforation. And then you do that for the rest of the painting. Like that. And you just go through again. I'm not pressing super, super hard, but I'm doing it enough so that it makes a mark or it'll kind of make a dent in the paper, a little perforation section. And then what I do, and I'm so sorry, I'm gonna push you, I'm gonna pull you over here again, is 
I pull up the entire section right here. And can you see that? That line right there? Do you see where the glare on the paper changes? You see that line? That's the line you cut on. This is the best way that I've figured out how to do this. If anyone else has a better idea or an easier idea or more convenient idea, feel free to share. But um, this is what I do. So then I go on there and I just cut it. And the kind of scissors I use are, they're, I think they're called felt scissors. They're super sharp and they're small blades. I, I have a lot of control over them. Um, they're meant for felt. I believe I got them from Walmart or Meyer. Now the tricky part about going, I don't, I'm not gonna go all the way up. You guys can't see that, but I'm not gonna go all the way up. I'm gonna leave about an inch from the top uncut because I don't want it to get, um, I don't want it to be crooked. So then what I do is I just lay it back down the best that I can, the very best that I can against this edge. It's okay if you have a little bit of space, that's really fine. Like that, sorry, I'm trying to, there we go, like that. And then when I go to, so I've been doing nine rows at a time because I have so much white. I've been do, using the nine drill tips. So then what I'll do down here is I'll just count nine and then I'll fold it at that point, a little bit above that point so I can reach all of the drills. So do you see that how, let me try to take this. No, that's actually worse. Do you see how I have folded it a little tiny bit above the line there? That makes it much easier for the drill tip to set all those drills down. So now when I'm ready, this whole entire section here is cut so then now I can just keep going up and up and up and up this painting came with two sections of paper so I didn't have to make this cut it was already cut for me and then obviously this is the end so and again I work right to left um, bottom to top so that might not make a lot of sense to some of you but because I use the drill the the um, multiple drill tips, I found that it's easiest to have the above the drill pen, you know, this area clear of drills. And then um, in another video, I said I leave a little part, like if I need nine on here, I'll put them into the very edge right here. So I have space for that little drill right there to go right down, you know, when I do this section up here to go right down and fit flush with the canvas. So that's another tip that I have for you. And I'm halfway done. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to freeing up my containers too and putting another Harry Potter um, diamond painting into all these containers that I have. I've got nine and three quarters here. I don't know which one I'm gonna do next. I've got Dobby. I've got Hedwig. I've got Expecto Patronum. I just got a ton of them. So with a lot of white. And what I did was I used one of my white bags. I, I emptied it. I refilled this container enough times so that I, um, I could um, so that I could 
empty this bag, but I saved it because I know that I have so many of these Harry Potter paintings with using the same white code and um, I don't know if it's the same, you know, uppercase I symbol, but it's the same DMC code. So once I'm done with this painting, I've got two bags here, I'll just save these and I'll use them for the next painting I have, um, the next Harry Potter painting I have. All right, so I think that's all for right now. And um, keep painting, and I'll talk to you soon.